The learning objective of this chapter is to highlight the importance of inspecting container lashing equipment on board by ship's crews, common defects that the crew should look for, the need to carry out routine maintenance, the need to maintain accurate records and inventories, and the importance of ordering correct replacement equipment. The type of container securing equipment used on board a particular ship will depend upon the ship's design, capacity and anticipated trading area. There will be a need to ensure that items of lashing and securing equipment are sufficient in number to properly secure the maximum number of containers to be carried at any given time ensure that adequate numbers of spares and replacements are always available on board and inspect all items of equipment for corrosion, buckling, distortion, cracking and excessive wear. Regularly inspect lashing components each time they are used and discard defective or suspect components thereby removing them from service and replacing them as necessary. Complete a formal audit of every lashing component on board annually supported by a written report. The ship must always maintain accurate and up-to-date records of sound and damaged items of container lashing equipment. The records must include where items are located together with their dates of inspection, maintenance, repair and replacement. Under the IMO guidelines for CSMs, appropriate documentation for fixed and portable devices should include information regarding the name of manufacturer, type designation of item with simple sketch for ease of identification, materials, identification marking, strength test result or ultimate tensile strength test, result of non-destructive testing and maximum securing load. A file of all class and manufacturer's certificates related to portable securing equipment should also be maintained. In the event of loss of containers overboard or damage to them, some attending surveyors will ask to inspect the file so as to ensure that any items lost overboard have been correctly entered. Lubricate frequently by inserting the lubricating shaft nozzle between the cone and housing and injecting grease into the shaft in both positions. Also inject grease to the wire handle by inserting the nozzle into the housing through the handle guide. Inject grease into the shaft by inserting the shaft nozzle between the cone and housing in both positions. The shaft nozzle is similar to what is used for twist locks. Inject grease into the shaft by inserting the shaft nozzle, similar to what is used for deck stackers, between the cone and housing in both positions. Lubricate by first cleaning dirty or rusty spindle threads and then applying grease. Inspect twist locks closely for signs of pitting which may weaken the twist lock. Checks must be carried out so as to ensure that the spring that holds the twist lock cones in the closed position is flexible. If rigid, the cones will not be held in their designed position. Also ensure that twist lock handles are not missing and housings are not fractured. Torsional deformation of a ship's hull coupled with longitudinal forces will cause containers to slide on their bottom twist locks, resulting in wear down of the base of the twist locks. Where excessive, the sliding forces can crack the base sections of twist locks. Some manufacturers therefore fit sacrificial exchangeable wear plates to the base of the twist locks. Where fitted, check the wear indicator to assess the state of the sacrificial plate. By simply fitting a new wear plate that has reached its predefined level, a twist lock can be readily renewed. Inspect closely for signs of pitting, which may weaken the midlock stacker. If you are in any doubt as to whether the extent of pitting has weakened the item, reject it from further usage on board.
Inspect closely for signs of pitting, which may weaken the item. If you are in any doubt as to whether the extent of pitting has weakened the item, reject it from further usage on board. Inspect closely for signs of pitting, which may weaken the item. Whereas slight bending of lashing rods may be acceptable, heavily bent rods must definitely be discarded. If you are in any doubt as to whether the extent of bending has weakened the integrity of the item, reject it from further usage on board. There have been several examples of incorrect usage of lashing bars, which are often altogether missing, or are located in the wrong container, or on the correct container but secured to an incorrect securing point. Inspect traditional turnbuckles, incorporating a pipe tube and lock nuts, closely for signs of pitting, which may weaken this item. If you are in any doubt as to whether the extent of pitting has weakened an item, reject it from further usage on board. Seized, cracked, or buckled turnbuckles should also be rejected. If slack-reducing turnbuckles are carried shipboard, maintenance is minimized, apart from the effects of pitting. This design solves the problem of turnbuckles being overstressed and failing, or working loose and failing due to shocks. Inspect closely for signs of pitting which may weaken the item, especially inside the skirting, signs of wastage, cracks, distortion, and or general deterioration. Deck sockets are fitted with drain holes that must be checked to ensure they're not clogged. Welding cracks must be immediately repaired. Inspect closely for signs of pitting which may weaken the item, signs of wastage, cracks, distortion, and or general deterioration, especially of the base plate. Welding cracks must be immediately repaired. The securing points of turnbuckles must be checked, especially in areas where they chafe against the plate, causing a reduction in thickness. Inspect closely for signs of pitting which may weaken the item, signs of wastage, cracks, distortion and or general deterioration, especially of the base plate. Welding cracks must be immediately repaired. Bear in mind that a retaining sleeve may conceal wastage of the main shaft inside it. The condition of a D-ring should be highly suspect if the retaining sleeve itself shows signs of corrosion. Inspect closely for fractured base plates, which may weaken the item and must therefore be repaired. Lubricate frequently by first cleaning dirty or rusty spindle threads and then applying grease. Inspect closely for seizing or buckling, as these factors will affect proper usage of this item on board. This illustration is of a distorted chamfered edge, the extent of distortion allowing the twist lock to be vertically lifted out. If dovetail fittings and their associated parts are compatible and in satisfactory working condition, it should be possible for the fitting to slide horizontally into its fitting on deck. If the deck fitting is in any way damaged or its associated part incompatible, it will be possible to lift the dovetail type twist lock or even a locating cone vertically out of the retaining deck fitting. If incorrect items of container lashing or securing equipment are ordered, the integrity of the ship's securing arrangements will soon destabilize. To ensure this does not happen, the correct description, part number, safe working load and braking load should be known for each component.